Hi, how's it going? It's Colin Daniel here from RiffNinja.com. I'm here to give you a taste of what you'll find on my new uh, Beginner's Blues Riff course. And uh, why don't we get started? This is a little discussion about the scale and how the riff fits into the scale because every riff fits into a scale whether you know it or not. Uh, the scale I based my teachings on for these riffs um, are in E pentatonic minor. It's an open scale, an open position scale, meaning it uses open strings. You don't necessarily have to know the notes in the scale, but you should know the starting note, the tonic note, the key note. That's the note that tells you what key you're in. In this case, because it's an open scale, pentatonic is a five note scale, um, and it's a two octaves, it's actually over two octaves, meaning it repeats itself um, a little more than twice. Um, we start on the E, low E. Good rule to remember is one finger per fret, although we're not going to use our pinky or our first finger. Um, some of the riffs, we do use our pinky and our first finger, but those are a little more advanced. Uh, but not for today. I'm just, this is just a follow-up to the riff I showed you with the string stretch in it, which is that riff right there. If you understood the scale better, you could add a little more character to it by adding more, more notes from the scale into it and joining it in different ways. You've got to be creative with it. Uh, you can get a lot out of just one riff, right? And the scale will help you. Also, scale is good for technique. It's good to develop right hand and left hand coordination. And Really, the secret to playing a good riff is the timing between your right hand and your left hand, um, especially for those hammer-on riffs. If you caught my other lesson on the hammer-on, you could actually uh, join these two scales or these two riffs and, and place them in the scale, right? But you got to know the scale. So the scale, you can remember in pattern of notes, depending on how you relate to it, or finger pattern or whatever works best for you. Um, it's open and then third finger, third fret, sixth string, then open fifth string, then second finger, second fret on the fifth string, then open fourth string, then second finger on the fourth string, and that second fret. Then open third string, then second fret with the second finger on the, on the third string. Then open second string, then third finger on the third fret, second string. And then open first string, and then third finger on the first string, and that's third fret. And that's your scale. Open and then third finger, open and then second finger, open and second finger, open and second finger, open and third finger, open and third finger. The idea is to get nice, clear notes. Speed isn't important, but nice, clear notes and good timing between your right hand and your left hand. And then once you get the scale, you want to reverse it. You want to descend. And some of my students struggle with the descending part, too. The descent is the exact reverse. See, on your way up, you're going from the lowest note on the string to the highest. Then you cross over, low to high, right? Cross over, low to high. 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 Now, on your way down, it's the reverse. You go from high to low. So, the highest note in our scale is on the third fret, first string. That's a G. So now the highest note, then lowest. Now you gotta cross over, go to the highest note. Then to the lowest, cross over to the third string, highest note, then the lowest, which is always open in this case, because it's an open scale. Then fourth string, highest note, then the lowest one, which is open. Then fifth string, highest note, and then the lowest. And sixth string, highest and lowest. So you're going from high to low. Okay, because a lot of my students will get, uh, because they get in the habit of going, open and then close, open and then close, they want to do that on their way down. Now that's not wrong, but that's not in order from low to high, right? Here, you, uh, if you do that, you're going high, or low and then high, low for each string, but you are technically still going down. But it's like a switchback where you don't go in, in succession, in order. If you want to go in order, it's from high to low, right? So third finger and then open, third finger and then open, second finger and then open, 
second finger and then open, second finger open, third finger open, and the notes are E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, and G. And then of course it's reversed on the way down. If this is G, then below G in your scale will be E, cross over, and you'll notice that you're going down in pitch every time, like you're skipping notes because this isn't uh, the most notes you can have in this scale, but it's our most popular scale, pentatonic, meaning five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Repeat. One, two, three, four, five. Repeat. And then we go one higher to the G, okay? Um, so E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G. And back down in reverse. G, E, D, B, A, G, D, E, B, A, and G, and E. Again, high G, E, D, and then open B. A and then open G, E and then open D, B and then open A, G and then open E. When you go up and down, when you get to the highest note, that works well with an E7 chord or an E minor chord, depending on the song example you're going to use. And then how does the riff fit in? Well, look. Or. It's all out of my scale, right? I fit the scale into that riff. So when you start to practice that, of course, um, you can really do all these different variations using the scale. You can learn to blend these riffs that I've taught you with the scale. So uh, have fun, be creative, and uh, if you like this lesson, you can check out some more at riffninja.com, easy riffs. All right, take care.